Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 9th of December. The holidays are officially here, and it just so happens we have a special group of newcomers with us today. It's not John. Nope, he's an oldie. It's not me. I'm also an oldie. We've got Dylan, Emily, Danush, and Sam, some of the rock stars from Owen J. Roberts High School, and we are excited to have them. With that, let's hand it over to John Yoder, our good friend, Canvas fam, and Canvas Rockstar to kick things off. Awesome. Well, as always, Mark, it's always a pleasure being here with you guys. And, uh, you know, these live streams I know are really important. And so as I was asking some of the kids to volunteer some of their time today, you know, we were talking about how important some of these things are for, for people right now, because we're all looking for ideas. We're all looking for things uh, to inspire us, to motivate us. And uh, we have an opportunity today to share some really great things. We're fortunate to be uh, working in a district that 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 values, uh, you know, state of the art technology. It values collaboration. It values student voice. And I thought, what a great way to showcase that, and hopefully inspire some teachers who maybe uh, don't have some of those resources at their fingertips to maybe have a few things. Uh, and so uh, today, I have a few other people here. But our focus is the show must go on, right? How can we use Canvas? But how can we use other ed tech? tools as ideas for connecting ourselves in extracurriculars, because think about that. Think about the power of uh, using some of these tools in a non-academic format. I've seen a lot of funny memes out there. There's a, a SpongeBob meme out there where it's like Patrick, uh, and it's like Patrick uh, making videos on TikTok, and he's like a master. And then it's like uh, Patrick using ed tech for education, and he's like nailing a board to his forehead. You know, because there's this kind of image that, you know, can we can we use can we teach students to use some of these platforms in a seemingly non academic way to maybe pave the way for that. And that's going to be a lot of our focus. I hope you leave here as a little buffet of ideas to maybe bring something, a portion of this uh, back to your district, because I think that would make all of us feel good because these kids here today are, are pretty awesome. These are great kids who who have given up their free time, their their study halls, their before school and after school to help other students. There's 33 of us that are part of this student run tech team. And it's a help desk, but it's so much more than that. And we're, we're in our infancy stages, so we're growing and we're well represented because you can even see here we we have some that are of different portions. So I, I'm going to like kind of let them uh, go ahead and unmute and just say hi and tell us uh, your name and, and your year. So if we want to start at the top with Emily and we'll kind of work our way through down to Dylan. Hi, my name's Emily Stansaw and I'm a star. Hi, I'm Sam speaking of Diano and I am a junior at OJR. Hi, my name is Dinesh Gallera. I'm a, I'm a junior in uh, Owen J. Roberts High School. Hey, my name's Dylan Weaver. I'm a freshman at uh, OJR. Yes, and again, these are an exceptional group of kids. It's funny, Dylan actually just joined us and, you know, he had first joined on and uh, it was saying, well, I don't know anything about coding. I don't know uh, anything about, uh, you know, a bunch of things. And I remember saying to him, like, well, that, that's how I got my job is I clicked buttons and saw what they did and, and learned from that. And actually the first day, uh, one of the first days, Dylan got thrown right to the wolves, but he actually really helped our, our nurses. Uh, Dylan, do you want to take a second and maybe talk about, you know, uh, what, what you were able to help them out, out with uh, last week? Uh, yeah, they were having trouble getting the medical forms that were originally paper and pencil, which we could do uh, before, but now that we're shut down, we have to do online. So I made a Google form version of their paper and pencil so that the teachers could take their medical forms online. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool because it was and it, again, it was some, some somewhat seemingly simple in terms of technology, but it became a really powerful thing. The nurse came down to my office said, you know, hey, John, can you can you help us? We had a couple ideas and they were actually sending out the forms and having people, you know, fill them out in whatever way they could, whether it was print them and then scan the back or use tools like Cami. Uh, but. I felt like when I was looking at their system, like they wanted emergency contact info and they update their system every year. And so now with Google Forms, they were able to send us that document. Uh, he was able to write it. I was able to like make a separate copy in a different drive for the nurses. And now they have a nice little system where they can easily access that information. And it's device agnostic. So you're not putting the load on the participant to, to get that in. So it's just really cool to see that we're not just we're not just helping, um, you know, other students. We're, we're we're really trying to promote academic collaboration, and so we call ourselves the Tech Pack uh, 
uh, but we wanted an acronym and we, we all, we bounced ideas together. We were using like uh, tools like Nearpod for people to like kick out ideas. And we came up with Tech Pack because we have a cat pack uh, for our, we're the Wildcats. And so TPAC became an acronym for technology to promote academic collaboration. And that's exactly what's happening. We're finding avenues for us to, to work together uh, to do that. And, and, and these students have been volunteering their time among 29 others who either come to our weekly meetings, they man the help desk from seven to three every day on Google Meet, um, you know, all sorts of things. They create logos. So the logos you're seeing on our screen were generated. The one in the top right, uh, Sam actually made that logo and a couple variations for us. And on the bottom right, uh, one of our vice chairs, uh, Praneeth, uh, made the logo below, uh, which is kind of neat because it's really been a true collaborative effort. Um, Sam, can, what, what program did you use again? I know we talked about this the other day. What program did you use to make that logo? I used a program called Be Funky. It's a really good photo editing um, site that I found a couple years ago, and it was very helpful in making logos and stuff. And I think that's the power of, of having student voice in there because we had we had uh, we also help uh, we have teachers submit project ideas because how many times does a teacher not want to try something new because they don't want to look foolish in front of their class, right? Teachers right now we're all day one teacher year one, it can be frustrating. So wouldn't it be great to have an outlet where you can say, hey, I really love kids to be able to do X, Y, or Z. Well, now I have a full class of kids that I can have demo. So our business teacher, uh, Mr. Burnett, you know, has really been trying to stay on top of his uh, marketing classes and really do a lot of the same things. And they were doing stuff like radio ads. And so he's like, hey, what do you think about me using Audacity? And so I put an email out to the Tech Pack kids and I'm like, hey, Mr. Burnett's thinking about Audacity. What do you guys think about that with a Chromebook? And like immediately I got responses. Oh, no, that's Linux based. And don't. And I'm like, like it was almost be over my head. Uh, a lot of it, truth be told, because, uh, you know, we're not all experts in some of those areas. And, you know, I've said this before on some of these live streams, we need to get away from the high chair of feeling like we're spoon feeding these children and, and treat it like we're sous chefs and we're all dividing that time up in the kitchen because we all have some piece to bring to that puzzle. And so that's that's really what we're trying to do here. Uh, so some of the tools we use was like Flipgrid. So I was going to ask Emily if she uh, she was one of our officers and she uh, what we did to kind of help everybody get to know themselves was they ended up using Flipgrid. Uh, so Emily, would you mind talking a little bit about the, the Flipgrid for the, the officer nominations? Yeah, so we Flipgrid to take like a short like video of ourselves, 90 to 60 seconds. It was a creative way to get the other people to know each other without fully like it's a short amount of time. They can watch it when they want. It was organized. And also because it wasn't an assignment, you could take your time and make them creative and play with the tools. And that also was like a fun way to get people to know like yourself and just like really be like calm and be you. Yeah, I think that's important, too, because, you know, that's one of the things like as a club, like how do we get kids to get to know each other? If we were going to have elections, how do we know that when we put out that Google form that they know who Emily is, they know who Sam is. And, and it was a way for me to kind of get to know them because I got to watch their videos as well and see why they wanted some of those officer positions, what kind of background they had. And it was a way to just have us all feel like we knew each other, even though we can't all be in the physical room together. Um, uh, so, and then one of the other things is I've been working at Villanova sort of, I've been challenging myself pr uh, professionally and personally, and I took a position this summer as an instructional designer based off of some of the degree, the ed tech degree I earned last year. And I wanted to use that and pivot out of the Spanish and Latin classroom a little bit just to see what it was like. And so Villanova has a really elaborate ticket system. And so we created that same thing using Google apps. Uh, so we essentially have like two Google Forms, uh, and then we kind of fill through that. I don't know, uh, Danush, would you mind maybe talking a little bit about what we do for that ticket system um, and, and how we kind of manage that? Yeah, sure. So the ticket system starts with um, a problem. Like if the uh, kids, um, stu like students, teachers, staff, anyone who come in and talk to us about their problems with their Chromebook, or um, like any technical di difficulties, we we do the best we can to help them out. And once we um, you know like help them out and everything, uh, we then fill up the we tell them to fill up this ticket that uh, that kind of verifies that you know we uh, we help them 
uh, we uh, we did this, we did that in order to make it functional for the people to you know um, experience um, all the technical stuff. And then um, and then once that form once I we filled up the form, uh, it just then goes to the the Google Sheet where we have a ton of list of um, a bunch of kids who helped the uh, like teachers, students, staff, like anybody in the O and J building and. Um, uh, and then uh, with, and there's a list of problems and a list of um, the students that helped out. So yeah, the ticket system is kind of helpful for us to you know verify what we held, what we did, and you know what's best for them and all. Yeah. So great. Thank you, Nish. I appreciate that because yeah. So basically, the way Villanova did is they have a system called eVista, and then the person fills out the ticket. So in theory you know, the person who needs help, like Dinesh was saying, fills out this ticket, which, you know, has us find out pertinent information for them. Uh, and then from there, uh, it gets kicked out to a spreadsheet. So I was like, well, how do we claim the tickets, right? Because in eVista at Nova, we just, I go in, I assign it to myself, and it's great. So we're like, well, how can we MacGyver this a little bit so that we could do that? So, you know, in theory, what ends up happening is these get sent out to a spreadsheet, uh, like Dinesh was saying, and then we can kind of put it in here uh, who's claiming it. So I created, I pushed the columns over. So typically in a Google form, the timestamp is, is, is column A. I pushed over and made column A where the members can put their name. And then we use a color coding system uh, to essentially show that off. So um, in essence, um, we put in green for that we were able to resolve it and it's complete. We put in yellow if it's in progress and we're waiting for some follow-ups. We put in red if they need to escalate it to either me or to our IT department. And then blue, you saw a couple of those is kind of cold storage. So if, for example, uh, we reached back out two or three times, they probably resolved the issue and they just didn't respond back to tell us it's all good. Uh, so then we kind of just put it. And then we have a second Google form that only the TPAC members have access to. And that's where they go in to say the steps that they took. So if they marked it yellow uh, or if they marked it red, uh, then that way whoever goes in to help out can go read that second Google form to kind of see what they already did so that they don't repeat themselves. So I was trying to find ways to kind of recreate what, what Villanova did. And then part of the onboarding process was using, they did a Google form application so that I could get to know them. Um, which had a bunch of stuff in there. And that's sort of a Dylan kind of alluded to earlier. I talked a little bit about the coding part because Dylan, what did you see on that form that kind of made you at first hesitant uh, to join? Well, one of the questions was like, what are you like familiar with? Like, what is your background? And a lot of it, like the, some of the first like five or six were all like coding and web design and app design. And I don't really know how to do any of that. So but then it went into like social media and PR and, you know, I'm a teenager, so it, I know how to do that. Um, I mean, it was just like, uh, like troubleshooting. Like, can you just, can you, are you persistent? Like stuff yeah. like that. Which is great. Cause then I also put in where they, like I used to run a Ted ed club at school. And so I also put in there that they should come with a passion project because I, if there wasn't something going on or we weren't getting tickets at first, I wanted them all working on something. And so Emily kind of designed something and ran with something. She became our social outreach chair. And so uh, Emily, if you don't mind just talking a little bit about uh, our current contest going on right now, that was really your brainchild. So I'd love for you to take a minute to kind of talk about what you came up with there. Yeah, so what I decided to do was I wanted to people to get out there and know our club, but also have like a fun like contest for the holidays. So what I decided, which I decided with you too, was to make a holiday or winter themed poster contest where they redesign our previous poster and make it like their creativity to make it winter and holiday themed. And we um, we worked with Target to get gift cards and we also came up with a couple other places like so people want to also do it, but it also can spread awareness about our club while also they have fun. Yeah, I thought that was really ingenious because it was like, well, we're we're continuing to brand ourselves because how do we as a club get our visibility out there when not everybody's walking through the the halls? Because currently at our school, I know Dylan had said shut down, but like currently right now we're we're completely virtual. Um, but we are in a hybrid model where we have half the students coming on 
uh, Monday, Tuesday, the other half on Thursday, Friday, but actually I should say a third because we have a good portion of our students. Uh, and I think uh, almost everybody on this call, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, full cyber. Or no, Sam, I'm, Sam, you might be cohort B if I'm not mistaken, right? I think. Yes, um, I am cohort B. Okay. So, so we have a good mix of students who are full cyber. So how do we get that visibility? Thankfully, we use Canvas. Uh, and so one of our prizes aside from Target is Canvas sent me a bunch of swag items. So actually, we have a nice little swag pack for our second prize of that contest. And then uh, for the third prize, our cat pack which is our student section for games. Uh, uh, one of our assistant principals, uh, Mr. Eric Wenzel, was nice enough to donate a cat pack shirt um, for our third place. So it was kind of neat because we had Target, uh, which, you know, Emily and Emily was like, can we just call them? So I think she called Staples, I called Target, and they immediately gave us some tools. So it was kind of nice to see us outreach to the community, brings the community involved. So now kids could be going to shop at Target if they win this contest and have a gift card. Some kids are going to get a really cool canvas. It's the cool canvas shirt mark where it's like the sloth with the lightsabers. Uh, and then it's a hat. And then there's some other cool uh, items there. And so there's some nice incentives for, for people. And they're learning about our club and they're helping us brand it. And they're helping us deck the halls because you know, that's going to be a harder thing for us to deck the halls right now. So even if it's putting up some winter themed posters with information on how to get in touch, then, then I thought that was a, just a, a great idea. And so, you know, we got all hands on deck. At one point, Emily met with our art teacher, Ms. Chabello, who had a background uh, in uh, art design and graphic design for promotion and PR. So the, the two of them, like she happened to be in the library. Emily was on a virtual meet with me. They, I connected them together and they just started running with it. And she started helping us develop a call to action and really helped Emily kind of fine tune it and, and curve those images for, for Mrs. Chevella was amazing because it was a throwback to what she loved to do before she became a teacher. And she was connecting with the teacher, uh, with the student in real time. Uh, and so that was a really cool way to have us collaborating together with two people who would have normally have been in a room. Emily, you don't, do you have Mrs. Chevella at all? No, I don't take any art classes. Yeah, so like what a great opportunity because wouldn't you say that I think a lot of that, that conversation that you had with her I thought was pretty eventful. Like it really helped us kind of finalize the poster, no? Yeah, and it also made us realize we should say like, hey, if you're not good of like, you can do digital or like use like your hands for this poster too. It doesn't all have to be like online. Yeah, and I think that's actually a really good segue too for us because I want to, as much as I want to talk about this club that I think is so awesome, uh, and we have been, we've been doing some really great stuff. We actually use Nearpod for our uh, club meetings. So actually today at noon, we have a club meeting. So uh, we're actually using Nearpod and breakouts because I want them to socialize. They say that they want to get to know each other. So we kick out into breakout rooms. They're running and I'm running a Nearpod with open-ended questions. And that's how I did some of the onboarding. So I would put a, a, an open-ended question that said, I can't sign in to each of the rooms had three or four kids in it. One of them was the secretary that actually had to write inside of the Nearpod. And then I was looking at the teacher dashboard of Nearpod and I was getting the live feedback from what they were coming up with in the room. And then I built in enough time for them to get to know each other, but also have a task to work on. And then I could either hop into a room if I wasn't seeing their response pop up or I knew to go to the next slide and then say, hey, I can't, I can't connect to Google or, and that's how we kind of got people on board with our protocol system and how we were going to help people. So it was really cool using Google and using the breakout feature in Google Meet, but also using Nearpod. We're using Cami right now to get the officers to sign the signature card so that we could submit to the school board to be an official club. So there's all of these things that we're able to do with the tools that we've been provided by our district. And that's been pretty cool, but it's not just us. There's tons of uh, clubs doing things. Right. And so we've had school assemblies using Google, Google Meet live stream. Uh, Mrs. Brella, one of our math teachers, but also just a, a great advocate for students, had been finding ways to have a homecoming court. And so she had a leader of the pack where they use Google Forms to vote. And then she did a Google live stream where they were able to come in and we were able to live stream their who they were and then ultimately reveal the leader, uh, which was a cool, a cool thing for Grant. He's actually the catcher for the baseball team uh, and a well-deserved recipient of the leader of the pack. Uh, but then the musical, the musical is doing stuff. They're doing virtual auditions right now through Flipgrid. Uh, the uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald has been using Canvas file upload to get videos so that she could use it in a separate software to do these beautiful concerts virtually. 
Uh, and, and so there's just a lot of great things we're able to do with the art, the art show. So Mrs. Chevello, let me take a minute to show that for a second, because working with Mrs. Chevello is always a treat. And I say that with a full sincerity, uh, because she is very detail oriented. And so I thought I was really cool creating a nice little like, uh, canvas page for the virtual art show, but she came in and gave me a lesson in graphic design and we created some of these buttons together that I'm about to show you that I think was pretty powerful. Cause last spring we were like, how do we have the art show? Typically the hallways have these beautiful displays all around by category. People go around, you can then kind of vote for your favorite. There's all of these things you can do. Um, but uh, you can see here, oh, I accidentally clicked the, the wrong button there. But in any event, that homepage really had a lot of beautiful buttons on there that we designed. And then each of those buttons led to a particular category where we embedded a Google slide. So if, you know, if we're looking at some of these things and we said, oh, painting oil, well, when we click on that, it goes to a, another page within the course uh, where we were able to embed a Google slide where all of the students had shared their work. And then they had a number. So that related to the Google form for the judges. And then they could just kind of hit play for themselves. And then it would take them through all of the art submissions. Uh, and then there were some, we built in some quick buttons using links and some of the tools innate within Canvas so that they could then get back to the main page or they could use the next button to move on to the next category. Because really we were just building it within modules so that they could kind of get through some of those pieces. But she helped me and we use Google Slides to design these buttons. We, we took the exact um, measurements that would help it fit. We made sure there was a white barrier behind it so that we didn't have to use a table. And then we just kind of played a little trial and error with the size, with I learned what drop shadow was. Uh, so there were some pretty cool things in here um, that were some other you know, orientation things. But you know, using Google Slides and doing some of those collaborative things can be really, can be really powerful too um, as well. Uh, so Nearpod, uh, Nearpod's another one that we've been using to kind of help. Can I ask one of you guys to, to talk a little bit about your experience with Nearpod and, 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 and ways that you've been seeing teachers or clubs use it? Um, I, don't, I don't care who unmutes, but one of you can certainly feel free to. Uh, I know um, a lot of teachers use it now. And uh, it's, it's difficult to focus for a lot of kids just watching like a Google slide because now that we're virtual, you can just turn your camera off and do whatever you want. But the the Nearpod, like it makes you focus because like there are little like, like the questions and there are little like little quizzes that aren't like worth any points, but like it keeps you engaged and it keeps you thinking about what's actually going on. And it keeps the kids that don't want to pay attention accountable because you can tell who's actually paying attention or not on the teacher side of it. And a little time to climbs, they're always fun. A little bit of, healthy competition is always good inside a classroom. Yeah, I, th I think what you said there is powerful. And we had another student who couldn't be here today, Matt, who said a very similar thing. He's like, you know, if it's a class I'm really excited about, like I get to be that kid that raises my hand every question, but I get the satisfaction of being able to answer every time without stealing somebody else's thunder. And, and at the same token, like, like Dylan was alluding to, if I'm a student who doesn't like to raise my hand, I get a, I get a platform to, to give my answer every time, to think every time, to actually produce every time. And I don't have to worry about if I said something that's gonna sound silly to someone because nobody's gonna know that I said it uh, or even see it depending on the type of activity they use. So I think the whether you're the go-getter and you're really excited about being able to participate for each one, or if you're the one who needs help, you just need someone there to kind of tap you on the, the digital shoulder. Uh, you know, Nearpod provides that opportunity for us to get data to, to progress monitor. Uh, so, you know, how powerful of a tool is it having something that is like a Swiss Army knife like that uh, to do? And then, like you said, I like the time to climb, too, because we often want to, when I use Nearpod, I have to build a culture around it. I can't just throw a tool in there and hope that it is like the Jetsons and is just going to work magically. I have to, I have to you know, you have to build a culture around that. So you have to tell people, hey, there's no, it's like, it's not that there's no points for it, but it's, it's participation points. So when I look at my Nearpod report, I look at the participation score. I don't look at how they scored on the quiz because I'm using it as a formative assessment, which is just a fancy word for, I want to see how you're feeling about it so that I can immediately give you feedback so that we can eventually course correct and get to, 
get to the end of our unit and and you be able to demonstrate the skills you need to be able to show me. So I think it's important. We live in an age with how easy, and these kids can tell you, how easy is it to open up a new tool and ask Google? I mean, my four-year-old will go over to our our Google assistant and be like, hey, Google, what's two plus two? You know, and, and it's, it's not that she's necessarily trying to cheat it. She just has a way of getting information. So can we be managers of that information? And and time to climb is cool because it makes you it makes you make a decision quickly, and then you can't edit it after the fact. So it's a nice way of getting kids ready for the potential for timed assessments. And you can build in timers so that you can desensitize them before they end up doing some of. And that's why using it for clubs can be a super powerful way to kind of get everybody comfortable, let everybody understand the power of such a platform. And then we can move on because it takes time, you know, and districts who, you know, districts who maybe don't buy into some of those tools or don't do it consistently and do it year to year, then what ends up happening is you get a little bit of a mix of Frankenstein's monster meets let's make a deal. And, and tools that are as robust as some of these tools like Cami and Nearpod and Screencastify are, they're tools that need to be there year in and year out so that you can get comfortable. Um, and so that that sometimes is something that I think you know, districts need to make decisions that suit their population, their device, their needs, and whether it's whether it's whatever. I mean, the ed tech market is saturated with tools, but it, it needs to be ones that teachers can't be left to do a wild, wild west approach. We need consistency and we need that. We need that. And so luckily we've invested in tools that we all can use. And I think we're started, we're really getting to a place despite this environment where we're catching on to that, which is cool. Um, NHS. Did any of you guys apply for NHS uh, this year or last year? I did. Can you yes. talk a little bit about that process and if you had to use any tools or? Yeah. So for that um, application, we used Cami and it was a Canvas course that was composed of all the potential applicants that could apply to NHS at OJR. And so it was a Canvas course and it had the CAMI um, embedded into the Canvas assignment. And so then you could do the CAMI, which was the application. So it was basically an online version of what you would normally fill out on paper and turn it in um, at school. So it was an online version. You would do your essay. You would put in like your service, what you've done, um, your grades, your clubs, all that. And then at the end, you would submit it through Cami, but it was also linked into the Canvas page. So it would um, submit the Canvas assignment and it would be linked in and it would be submitted easily. And, and in I an think organized that's true because it's, it's a one stop shop. So we've created this course and they actually did a really neat thing. They created a provisional course so that everybody who wanted to apply was able to self-enroll in the application so that they could do all the things uh, that Tim was just telling us about, uh, which was really cool because they were able to take advantage of the integration of some of those tools and make it really easy and similar to the past. But the other thing that's really cool about National Honor Society, and this was something I started three years ago, uh, one of our most senior teachers, and he would let me say that word about him, Mr. Lieberson, uh, who is uh, just, willing to do so much for kids and knows that it's a new world. And so when he took over that honor society a couple of years ago, we wanted to create a better system for tracking hours. So just like I have on my phone, the ability to track hours, um, we wanted to create a system like that where they could submit their hours. So we decided to use Canvas. So what we would do is we set up assignments for them to have their um, hours that are required of them. And then we made it certain points to represent the number of hours. And so when they would submit it, he goes in the speed grader, would verify, put an annotate on it, write in the comment to timestamp it, and then they just keep resubmitting it. And then he keeps adding in the score and speed grader till they get up to 10 out of 10. And that was a real time way they could use the grade screen, say, see that they had five out of 10 out of district hours and know that they still needed to submit hour sheets for those other five hours. So it was, it took away that antiquated, like print out a piece of paper, put it in the homeroom teacher's box. The homeroom teacher completely forgets about it. And by the time they remember to get it out of the box and give it to the kid, they've already submitted and there's new hours. So we needed to find a better way uh, to do that. And so just using simple Canvas tools allowed us uh, to do that. And then we made, you can see duplicate assignments. 
because uh, for the incoming class, we wanted to enroll them as sections so that we could divvy up some of those announcement, announcements and assignments separately. Uh, and so now Ms. Mrs. Smith and Ms. Joyce have taken it over and it's been a super seamless transition because we just added them within the course as people and it became a really easy changing the guards, uh, which became really cool as well. Um, and then the, the last thing is sports teams. Now, I don't know if any of you have used it. Has anybody used it for a sport team yet? I'm not sure if that's something that you guys have done. Um, and I'll show you while I'm waiting to see if anybody has the, uh, the other thing that I've been able to do is baseball. So obviously I have my background of the baseball field. I'm wearing my, my baseball. I'm uh, one of the uh, varsity assistant coaches. And so we've been using, uh, I actually got this course out of the commons. So I highly encourage you to go to the commons and search certain things because I was able to get it and then make it my own and put some of these other pieces here. And so we had our chore list for last year. We had our bunk coverages here. Uh, we put uh, our, uh, our signs there, which was kind of cool because what we did is I made a quiz. Uh, so when we, when we initially shut down last spring and we were still hopeful that things we're gonna come around, we're like, well, let's use this time. So I started, I filmed, when we went to Florida the year before, I filmed the coach giving signs. And then I made a quiz with those as embedded video files. And then I would say like, hey, what, um, what sign did coach just put on? Uh, and so it became a really easy way to have this signs quiz. We rolled out our hazing policy for the district here. So we had accountability for that. Everybody had seen it and reviewed it. And we made them actually participate and answer questions based on it. Um, but it was really cool. We, in, we integrated Flipgrid. We made them do MacGyver workouts at home to inspire others. So we integrated Flipgrid uh, for senior night. We had them upload their uh, photos so that we could get them to the athletic director. Uh, we did a virtual catch between all of the teams. So a lot of them submitted their videos for that virtual catch through this system too, which was cool. Um, so there were a lot of uh, interesting things we were able to do. Unfortunately, I'm at home today and not having the nice robust network of school. So I apologize for the delay, um, but you should be seeing here load up some of those questions and then you'll see the coach and the video um, so that they could kind of learn coach's mannerisms since they weren't going to have as much time seeing him do them at practice. And so this was a, a really interesting way to kind of use some of the Canvas tools uh, to be able to, to do those things. So fortunately, it's not loading, but I promise you it's really cool looking. Uh, and it then actually some of these were open ended questions. We didn't want to lead them. So uh, we made them kind of fill in the blank. And then, you know, once it loads, you would have noticed a video here. I'll let that load, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that's, you know, some of the ways we kind of wanted to showcase because, you know, we hoped somebody else would get inspired and think of, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, we can still do our art show. Oh, we can still do our applications. Oh, our kids can still meet each other and vote for officers, even if they're not sure everybody in the club. Uh, and so we, we just kind of felt a need, like we feel within our school community, but to have an opportunity like this for Mark to invite us on and be able to share it with a much wider audience. I mean, it's an honor for us because we're doing some cool stuff. Uh, and we hope, we hope that it's a, a shimmer of hope for some people who maybe are in a place right now where they're, they're struggling to, to, to see the forest for the trees kind of scenario. So, um, Mark, I don't know if anybody has been putting anything in the chat, but I think it might be a good opportunity before we end to see if anybody uh, has any questions or anything of that sort. You know, great comments from, from some of our friends, John, we've got Beth Crook on here. We've got Patricia Flores. We've got uh, Portia Evans <clears throat> and a whole bunch of others. Um, just a lot of shouts for, for this wonderful team. Patricia saying, wow, very cool program. Beth, uh, you all are rock stars. Portia, wow, love it. Uh, great ideas. Thanks for sharing. You know, everyone, I think that <clears throat> hopefully you're, you're gathering that that the students and the educators out at Owen G. Roberts High School are doing some pretty incredible things. And, and it's not rocket science that they've, they've, they've taken. John, for example, has, has found some cool templates when you look at his baseball one, for example, in the Canvas Commons. Um, John, for those who may not yeah. be familiar with the Commons, why don't you give just a quick- The quick Commons, I mean, what we're in the world today is. where there's a lot of open educational resources, right? OER, and, and Commons is just a, a platform for anybody who uses Canvas 
to go in and I encourage not just to consume, but you know, we live in a world where we're consumers of media, but what one of the things I'm trying to pass on to all of the students in the tech pack is that we also wanna be contributors. So if we're gonna take, we need to give. Uh, and so I encourage anybody who's created something really cool. Uh, oftentimes when you go to your course, you have the ability on the homepage on the right side to, to share to commons. I encourage you to share. Uh, share things because that area is people who have taken time to share really cool templates, quizzes, modules, you know, it could be anything from a whole course to a particular quiz. And be inventive with your search names because it can really help you find some of the things that already exist out there. That's where I found our onboarding course. So for all of these uh, students, a part of the tech pack, they had to complete an onboarding course that we also gave to our freshmen this year, which was a package I found on uh, Commons called Passport to Canvas. And I was able to kind of edit it to fill in information specific to O&J, such as our Chromebooks and our virtual code of conduct and embed some of those tips. But then I had a whole course ready to go there that I could pick and choose what to publish, what made sense. You know, it, it allowed you to unpublish. We're not a Microsoft 360 school, so I unpublished the Microsoft tools, but I published all of the Google stuff. And it was really nice to just have a place to start so that you're not feeling like you're creating or recreating the wheel. So it's just a place to share. It's a place to share and it's a place to consume. And I, I encourage you, if you have that C with the arrow on that bottom left global uh, navigation menu to hit that, authorize it. If you're not seeing it, please contact uh, your district administrator because they can contact what's called your CSM, your customer success manager through Canvas, and they can help you turn some of those features on uh, to make sure you're you're really using all of the the great tools within Canvas because there are a lot of tools and I'm sure you know you may see people get overwhelmed by that because it does with any of these tools they're deep they're we're trying to do really deep stuff we're asking kids we're trying to develop lessons where we have kids reach level you know web's depth of knowledge level four we're trying to get to the SAMR model we're trying to do some of these deep level skills well should it come to a surprise that the tools we need to use need to be just as robust. Uh, which means that it takes time. So, you, you know, we're in our third year of Canvas and, you know, it's, it's a slow roll uh, and it takes time, but it's like, uh, the, remember the Titans, he says like his playbook is thin because it's like Novocaine, just give it a little bit and with time it'll work. And that's really the same approach that we all need to take because we all need to be building our, our playbook right now. We all need to build our playbook. We need to set the plays that work for our offense and we need to know our defense and we need to know what we're capable of. And Canvas allows you to level that uh, for yourself. So I hope that uh, I hope that you take advantage of areas like the Commons so that you can kind of explore and see all that Canvas has to offer. I love this. I love this slide specifically. Anybody who's who's still with us, check out what it is the OJRHS. As Owen J. Roberts High School did with technology to be able to keep kids going during this pretty difficult time over the past year. Uh, school assemblies, music concerts, uh, art, uh, and a whole bunch of other things, whether they've used Flipgrid, Nearpod, Google, uh, Kami, and a whole bunch of others. They've, they've done a really good job at keeping kids going. I want to ask, I want to open this up, Dylan, Emily, Danush, and Sam. Sorry to put you on the spot. Don't hate me. Um, but I want to know, I mean, the, the past the past year of your life during during quarantine has probably been fairly rough, but what's it been like to have to be part of this tech team that's been able to create opportunities for students to still engage with extracurriculars without without maybe seeing people in student in, in person? Any comments from you guys? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been tough, you know, but because now not, you're not able to see everybody, but going through Google Meet and having I mean, this community uh, overall is just great because you get to meet new people. I just joined, and I've already met me and me and Danush. I, I make I make jokes, but we're we're gonna be. I can already tell we're gonna be great friends. But like, we met through this club, and it's and it's been great to have to meet everyone and do other clubs. Like I do student council. We do Google Meet. I we, we meet every week, and it's through it's through technology. We get to see everyone, and we get to see the teachers' faces. We get to see our friends that we haven't seen in an entire year because we can't go outside. And you just, you get a lot more integration with the community through technology now than we would have when we started. How, how do you think, uh, another question, let's go for Danush, Emily, or Sam on this one. Thanks Dylan. Um, 
how do you see education changing moving forward? So, you know, there's of course a lot of talk about a vaccine. Hopefully we can get this, you know, we can, we can get COVID eradicated and everything and we'll be back to normal. But how do you see what we've done the past month with technology, past year with technology? How will that change your educational experience going forward? Uh, I think that this, even though it has its really hard difficulties, that this in learning environment virtually is giving teachers more feedback, more suggestions to create an overall better learning environment. And I think that in the future that this past year will benefit learning for everyone just because teachers are more open to feedback. They are more responsive and teachers are learning themselves. And so it's a level playing field between teachers and students to get to see how to learn best when times are difficult. I love it. Big shout out to Emily, Dylan, Danush and Sam uh, for being just awesome, awesome students and helpers. But, but uh, you know, th this has been a different experience for going to high school virtually a lot of the time. Uh, so congrats for keeping up the good work, for keeping your, keeping your other classmates informed and moving along. Uh, I would love to have just a quick second from each one of you. We'll start up in the top left with Dylan. Uh, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Uh, our, our teachers have obviously been just incredible. Um, you know, and it's been, it's been pretty difficult on them as well to get everything going. So what would you say, Dylan, starting with you to any of the teachers out there about, about kind of your gratitude for continuing this process of virtual learning? Uh, I'd say, I know it's tough learning everything new that you have to teach through a different way, but you got to keep going. And we appreciate that you took in the time to, uh, to teach us our new ways of learning and just for giving all the time that you have outside of school to learn these new systems for us. Awesome. Emily, what about you? I would say kids are very frustrating times and the fact that they can stick with that and keep pushing through and trying to work with everyone to the best ability is great. Love it. And they need to like the fact that they just keep going and waking up and just keep teaching us every day. I love great. it. Okay, Danush, what about you? What would you say to those teachers? Um, I know times has been tough the, um, the past year and, and now we need to accept the, this kinds of change and, and the teachers, um, uh, when the quarantine started, they did a fabulous, fabulous job without them. We would have not know like how to do all any of these stuff. Uh, so yeah, I like to thank the teachers, staff, even students too, uh, who are being so attentive to their um, teachers, even uh, and um, communicating too, because communication is kind of the the big key thing uh, for this year, especially with the online classes, um, and you know, the um, TIA and helping out staff, teachers, and students with any technical difficulties. That's why Mr. Yoder here started this club. And that's what, uh, and then he, uh, he made this, um, you know, this wonderful um, opportunity for all of us, you know, to make our voice be heard and, and, you know, um, make change, change make, um, you know, change happen and make I love it, Danush. So, Sam, what about you? Yeah. Um, I would say to the teachers that we see you, we see your perseverance and we see you like making the effort and we appreciate that even though we might have our cameras off in class and our microphones muted, we still appreciate the effort and hard work that you're putting in. And it's a very awesome thing that everyone is doing, especially the teachers. I love it. So some good comments here on Facebook. This virtual learning situation puts the spotlight on amazing students that have tech skills everyone will need in the future. Great job, kids. And John, again, huge shout out to Owen J. Roberts High School for for having incredible educators like like John and a whole bunch of others, incredible students, the kind of stuff that they're doing with technology, Canvas included, Cami included, Nearpod included, and a whole bunch of others is just beyond impressive. John, why don't you wrap it up and give a big thank you to these incredible students you brought along? I mean, it's it's, it's super emotional, to be honest. I mean, like to, to think of what I had this idea of being, and it really, was just to, to help alleviate students and teachers 
so that they could persevere, so that they could do that. And, and really to show that students, students are inventive. They're so creative. And if we can provide them a path, but not, but get out of their way and let them drive a little bit that, I mean, like amazing. I mean, Dylan's a freshman. That was the most, you know, one of the most profound statements I've heard are, are been from him and I've just met him. And, and thankfully uh, his mother saw a post on Facebook that was about the club and pitched it to him and, 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 and Sam, you know, and Emily and Danush, like, I mean, seeing, seeing Dylan and Danush in, in our fourth period, like when they manned the chat, like it, it just felt, felt like their kids were in a room and like they're Praneeth and Milland and there's Thomas, there's a million other kids that aren't on this meet that we've had moments where I forgot that we weren't in the same room. And, and that's the power. And those moments are, are fewer and farther between, but they're there. And if you persevere and you do all of the things, because all of Emily and all of these uh, students are trying to tell all of us that they're here, they're, they're appreciative. And even though it feels like we're making Thanksgiving dinner every day and no one's showing up, they are there. And even though they're not gonna eat it when it comes right out of the oven, they are gonna eat it later and they're gonna enjoy it and they're gonna be thankful for it. So, you know, even though it feels a little like Groundhog Day, Bill Murray style, uh, we just need to keep at it because that feedback and all of that stuff is, is so valuable. So I, I'm really thankful to all the students today for, for giving their time. Love it. Big shout out again to Owen J. Roberts High School, to John, to these incredible students. I'm going to use partially some words from Sam that she shared there. Big thanks to teachers. We see you. We hear you. You're doing really incredible things. Uh, that would be both for these students as well as for the teachers. Keep up the great work. We're back tomorrow morning, 1030 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody.